Hi friends, thanks for joining me again for another LJD Studio Stinging Tip. So today I want to talk about airflow. Airflow can be fast, it can be slow, it can be wide, it can be thin, and I think it's that second part that's like, what? Air can be wide? All right, so today we're just going to get familiar with the way air can leave our bodies because particularly when we go for a high note, the way the air leaves the body really changes the experience. I mean, it always does, but I think it really plays out in a very concrete way when we go for our high pitches. So I just want you to start by taking a big breath in and then let it all out your mouth. Go, good, okay, do that again, breathe in. Let it all out your mouth. Okay, now I want you to breathe in and then make a TS sound, go tss, 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 and really hold that third one. So try that, go. Good. Okay. So if you compare those two versions of the exhale, can you feel how the first one, the, it's a lot of air, right? It's all your air leaving your body at once, right? But that air essentially sort of tumbles out of your body without any sense of control. And if you could visualize the air leaving your body, it's sort of wide and sluggish, right? In that tumbling out versus you can almost imagine it being a little bit more narrow and it's definitely more energized, right? There's, there's some speed to that. Uh, the best analogy I have for this is think of what would happen if you had a garden hose with water running through it and you put your thumb over half of it, that water shoots out really fast. That's sort of similar to what we're doing with our airflow. So particularly when it comes to high notes, we have this understanding, this intuition even, that it's going to need a little bit more oomph. And so we give it all our air, we go, ah, and we go for that high note. And most of the time when we approach it that way, it doesn't work out super well for us because high notes don't need big air. High notes need fast air. They need energized air, right? Which is more like that second, tss, 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 which requires some resistance. So when we talk about breath support, that's sort of what we're talking about. We're talking about the resistance that we're sort of creating in the body so that that airflow as it exits the body can be really energized. So when you do that, tss, 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 you might pay attention to what you feel in your abdomen. There's probably some pressure somewhere because there's something sort of holding some of the air back, creating this more narrow exit way for it so that that energy can really speed up in your airflow. It's a similar action to what you're going to need when you're approaching a higher pitch. So play around with it. I'd encourage you to do what I just did here several times where it's nothing but air. You're not really vocalizing yet. So you can really familiarize yourself with <sighs> big sluggish air versus tss, 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 narrow, fast, energized air and how you're doing that in your body, right? And I will say, I'm letting you cheat a little bit. You're creating some resistance at the level of the mouth as well. When you're singing, your mouth is likely open. So you're gonna to have to create the resistance through your core and not through your mouth, All right? So, but just play around with it. Get familiar with this idea of what does it mean to let all the air out? And then what does it mean to really energize my airflow instead? Let me know how it goes. Happy singing.